You're watching Telecom TV for Mobile World Congress 2018. And we're here on the Interdigital stand for our panel discussion on how end-to-end -end network slicing can create new business opportunities for operators. And I'm delighted to say I am joined on my near left by David Orloff, who is Director of RAN Introduction at AT&T, Andrew Coward, CEO of Lumina Networks, and Ray Motter, who is CEO and Principal Analyst at ACG Research. Gentlemen, thanks for, for joining us. Thank you. Can we be clear to begin with about what we mean by network slicing and end-to-end -end network slicing? Because it's one of the most talked about topics in the 5G world um, without necessarily knowing what it means. <laughs> David, what, what, what's, what, does, what does network slicing mean to AT&T? Well, I, I think the easiest way to think about it is 5G is really about coverage and speed and latency. And what network slicing allows us to do is to really provide an optimized uh, environment, uh, depending on the service, around those three uh, key drivers for, for the technology. And Andrew, Luma Networks is right at the heart of, of this. What is network slicing to you? Yeah, for, for us, it's, it's about being able to divide up the resources of the network, uh, not just the bandwidth on the, on the access side, but the resources in the middle of the network, the mm -hmm. firewalls, the services, the connectivity, the bandwidth inside, and being able to essentially give every customer or every enterprise their own network mm -hmm. that looks to be uniquely theirs, mm -hmm. secure, private, um, and unique to the services that need to get delivered to their customer base. And Ray? Yeah, I mean, I, I think from my perspective, there's been a lot of uh, confusion about network slicing when it gets to virtualization. You know, like MPLS, you have VRF, which has multi-tenancy, but network slicing is more from an end-to-end -end perspective, right? And, and you're able to address not just com uh, networking, you're able to put compute and storage and give you flexibility to develop new business models. So more than just QoS capability or multi-tenancy. Uh, and when we talk about slices, are we talking for an operator to uh, enable tens of slices, hundreds of slices, thousands of slices? What, what, what sort of numbers? Are, are, how, you know, how far are we segmenting and, and offering bespoke networks? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely larger than 10. It's definitely larger than 100. Um, I'm not sure if it gets up to 1,000, but you know, it's really, I think, dependent on the, how the services are defined and how the services uh, utilize uh, the network slicing characteristics to to again meet a specific customer need or uh, uh, yeah, a, a specific customer need. And Andrew, it must be quite a challenge to actually physically enable that within the network. Well, this is about automation. So if you don't have the provisioning actions and the abstraction to essentially automate each slice that you create and say, I'm going to create a service, it's got these attributes, it delivers this amount of bandwidth to this customer set um, and with these services. Those definitions then have to be automated so you can scale from the tens to the hundreds to the, the thousands. Without that, you, you don't get anything. And are you in the demo stage with, 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 with uh, some of your applications? So we, we've been demonstrating essentially SDN control um, across multiple aspects of the network, whether it's the radio side, then the backhaul, and then in the data center and, and all of the, the VNS, the virtual functions that you need. Um, so this is really about tying all of those orchestration elements together uh, cross domain to deliver one slice. And this isn't necessarily just about 5G either, because once the technology is in place, once the automation method's in place, it applies to fixed line, it applies to 3G, 4G, and so on. It, it's not bound by the, the 5G radio access technology to any means. Right, are we, um, are, are we starting to see carriers so sort of coalesce around a certain strategy to, to implement slicing, or are they still looking at options? Might we see diff different interpretations? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I mean, I, I think initially they're trying to understand the implementation. Andrew touched on a good point. There's this misconception that network slicing is just related to 5G. There's multiple areas, and what you see a lot of carriers doing now it's taking what you call use cases, but identifying what we call customer personas, right? And customer personas is basically you identify vertical spaces, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's retail, whether it's finance, right? And you identify what the characteristics and the need, and what you find out is some commonality requirements for each. And then it allows the operator to develop a slice based on low latency, different levels of requirement that's aligned to that vertical. The ones that are doing that are, are, 
or spending more time to be successful there. Are we, are we seeing um, commonalities between slices? For, for instance, security uh, as uh, one of the, the leading yeah. uh, enablers here, or, or latency. I mean, right. um, it, it's not a case of every slice is, is completely different. There's going to be commonalities between them, I, yeah. I guess. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, absolutely. There's like, if, if you look at, let's say, finance, right? But security is is a big concern. Government security is a big concern. So you have to find these commonalities across these verticals so that you could be able to offer these slices correctly. But then the slices yeah. may vary massively in how much bandwidth they can That's consume. That's right, yeah. Right? So if, if you're doing video surveillance, for example, that's going to be very different from, say, an IoT application for you know remote sensors. Mm -hmm. So you may have millions and millions of sensors and only hundreds of security cameras, but security cameras could totally outweigh the bandwidth requirements of these right. hundreds of thousands of sensors. So that's why the slice um, needs to be uh, essentially augmented specifically for what the end devices are and the, and the bandwidth consumption requirements. So, so for, for an operator, um, underpinning all this, is, is this a central role of SDN? Uh, I think it's a set, yeah, I think SDN's a, a key part of it for sure. Uh, you can think of edge computing as a key part of it as well. I mean, where the services get built close to the subscriber um, will allow uh, the different verticals to, to make strong benefit of, of the capabilities. Uh, is this in a way of revisiting the MVNO model or, 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 or breathing new life into this model, which has gone a bit quiet of, of, of late. Do we, do we see this as a MVNO V2? Well, I guess to, to the extent that each of these slices creates a new network for a specific segment, a particular type of customer, then uh, if we extend the term MVNO to say, well, a car manufacturer who's now got their own private network um, to connect their cars together, are they an MVNO or are they an enterprise customer of at and it, it, it's, it's a similar similar construct at the end of the day. Uh -huh. I'd probably say that they're an enterprise customer of AT&T. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, once we've got these, this, the technology in place and we're offering these slices, the, the, the next question is really is, you know, how does a telco monetize it? How, how, how are these services offered? What's, what's the financial model, right? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, once you identify, like I said, those commonalities and the verticals, right? then you're able to take that, right, and develop the use cases where it gives you the capability to create slices and either lease a slice from an end-to-end -end perspective, whether it's an IoT or even a temporary, where if you have a venue like this and you want to create a, a network slice for a particular, um, you know, venue like, uh, let's say, sports or Mobile World Congress or a racing event, it's something that it can monetize as a new revenue, kind of like with the way cloud change the market, right, with uh, capacity and compute capability is going to be very similar to that. So there's quick revenue opportunities if they can do it correctly. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I simplified a little bit. I mean, customers aren't going to know that they're getting a slice. You know, what they're going to know is, I have a new augmented reality service that I'm getting from AT&T, and, and that requires high bandwidth and low latency, you know, or, or whatever. It just works, right? Yeah. Um, we know that what it requires, they don't. So, you know, uh, driverless vehicles, you know, are going to require, you know, not as high a bandwidth, but definitely ultra reliable, um, low latency uh, services like that as well. So the services are going to be there and the customer are going to know the services that they get in the network we're going to take care of the slice to make it be optimized where we can get the most out of our network as well. So, so it's not so much we're offering network slicing as a service, we're, we're offering services, pure and simple, to, to, to enterprises. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this is why the automation framework that comes with this is so important, because the definition of that service is something you need to define at a high level. And you're going to have, let's say, potentially hundreds of these, these things, mm. and then roll them out. Um, you know, literally a touch of a button so that they get propagated through the network and the network looks like that to that customer set. Mm -hmm. The other thing it does is it, it drives this kind of quick change to how you can actually turn this on. You can test things in the market and say, will this service work? If it doesn't, you, ha you don't have to rebuild a new network to adjust it. You, you've simply changed some parameters and, and, and relaunched it. But with, with so many elements when we go end to end, um, it, is it is it possible or even desirable to, to standardize all of this? Or some, you know, how, how can we ensure that um, a, a customer can select the right service provider? 
if we're, there's no end-to-end -end standardization? Yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, there is definitely different implementations that are going to start off. And, and with 5G, you know, we do see a lot of fragmentation that occurs in the way that implementation is completed. Um, the real trick is, is to standardize the structure for providing the slices so that everybody at least has the same playbook that they're developing against. Um, and then we really are looking to the marketplace for how those services get developed and, and which ones are profitable for monetization and which ones aren't. Yeah, I was, I was just going to add, I mean, I, I think that's going to be an important part when you start looking at situations where you have to do a slice across multiple operators and stuff like that, where that's where it's going to become really important because you can put the automation, but without that standardization in there, it's going to be complex. So that's going to be an important part in the multiple carrier. I know at t can do it all, but in the multiple carrier <laughs> domain, right? Yeah. I think there's also this, this concept that's very important of abstraction. So yeah. as things change or as standards evolve, you, you shouldn't have to change the business logic just because some underlying components changed. So abstracting the business logic so that it's actually translated into the specific instructions for one vendor versus another is essentially how you get get, you get through that. So as you make changes, you, you don't have to rebuild the network again. There was some news uh, emerged this morning at the show from uh, a particular vendor and, uh, and a particular operator uh, looking at a study of, of network slicing. They were saying that we should enable about 40% cost reduction in the core network through network slicing, and at the same time, about a 35% revenue potential uptake. Would you say, you know, that, that roughly speaking, that's what we're looking at? We're looking at a serious reduction in, in core costs and at the same time, hopefully expanding where we can get revenues from. I mean, I, I would say, you know, the, the opportunity there when you look at other areas, whether it's NFE or SDN, because like look at SDN, initially you started as a technology play with OpenFlow. Now, you don't mention SDN without leading to automation and stuff okay. like that, right? And automation leads to operational efficiency, but if you do it right, it leads to profitability gains, right? So same thing with network slicing type of capability that uh, initially it needs to be implemented from an optimization to optimize the OPEX of doing it. Without it, it's going to be really expensive and complex. So do that first and then develop the, the, what I call the higher end, which is the newer revenue opportunity. But you have to start with the profitability point of view first. Yeah. Can we, um, can, can we round this up with um, you know, looking at what we think operators need in their toolkit? What, what are the tools that are going to be essential in order to successfully deliver end-to-end -end network slicing? What are you finding so far, David? Well, I think largely, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. um, I think there's a, a very big synergy with, with edge computing. Um, and so we really have to build up the structure for edge computing, allowing us to build services that are close to the subscriber uh, that can make benefit of network slicing. Andrew? Um, yeah, for, for us it's about having the control mechanisms, the automation mechanisms to be able to say, I, I don't care whether it's a brand new white box or a legacy piece of infrastructure I'm dealing with, I need to provision it and control it the same way for my business logic. Once you have that foundation in place, then you're able to kind of change the components out and start building up these services. This isn't something that will happen overnight or in, in, in one sweep. This will happen successively, and we have to be able to mix the old and the new together through this uh, virtual white box and, and legacy. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it's, if you look at the difference between the product line versus the engineering uh, point of view, when you talk to some of the executives that are the GMs, they really don't care about the term network slice. They want, they want to abstract the business from the network and say, these are the new business opportunities I want to develop. Is the network able to do that and give me the agility? So there's a level of agility that needs to happen in the network so that they can make decisions quicker. Some people say fail quick, but I call it succeed fast, right? <laughs> uh, from that side of it, right? So yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you all very much. Um, we're out of time, unfortunately, um, but I'd just like to thank all our panelists, and uh, especially our sponsor, Lumina Networks, and our hosts here, Interdigital. But don't forget, you can watch all Telecom TV's content from Mobile World Congress 2018 on our website, telecomtv.com. Thank you, and goodbye.